Thank you, Mr. President. Papua New Guinea has the honor to speak on behalf of the Coalition for Rainforest Nations. At the outset, let me congratulate you for the organization of these dialogues. We have found many of the discussions held very productive, and we are confident under your able leadership we will be able to finalize the remaining work ahead. Mr. President, we support the statement made by the distinguished delegate from Guyana on behalf of the Group of 77 and China. Forestry, agriculture, and land use issues are critical elements toward achieving the Paris Agreement objective and ensuring our future is well below the global temperature threshold of 1.5 degrees. We can ensure our future below 1.5 degrees only by combining the necessary transition to renewable energy and other emissions-free energy along with full implementation of the Red Plus mechanism and regenerative agriculture. As indicated under Article 5 of the Paris Agreement, the Red Plus mechanism is ready. The Red Plus mechanism is delivering the expected results. Over 8 gigatons of Red Plus results have been already achieved by rainforest nations. The promised financial support is still woefully inadequate with only 4% of Red Plus results paid for and retired. Pre-2020 Red Plus results must be considered for early actions undertaken by developing countries where the parties have so decided under existing decisions to facilitate this transformation and immediately address the climate crisis, the Coalition for Rainforest Nations has launched the Red Plus Registry and Trading Platform to meet all transparency requirements under the Paris Agreement that will be cost-free for Red Plus countries and the developed world. Mr. President, we welcome the exchanges among parties on Article 6 of the Paris Agreement. We are very concerned, however, that some parties are still advocating positions that will erode our goal to keep temperature rise below 1.5 degrees or 2 degrees for that matter. What the parties have agreed for Red Plus instructs how Article 6.2 and 6.4 should be designed if we are seeking environmental and atmospheric integrity. Clearly, it makes no atmospheric sense to credit one hectare of our forests while two or more hectares are being failed elsewhere. Similarly, it is nonsensical to credit one solar project while at the same time there are three diesel power plants initiated elsewhere. There must be equitability and parity between what developing countries are being asked under Red Plus and reductions in Annex 1 countries and other sectors under Articles 6.2 and 6.4. Therefore, environmental integrity under Article 6 must be built upon the following. Implementation of national level reference levels by sector. Implementation of national GHG accounting by sector. Application of all inclusive corresponding adjustments. Full inclusion in nationally determined contributions and strict avoidance of double counting. We believe the CDM has failed to provide predictable and sufficient climate finance for the majority of developing countries. Looking at global carbon emissions data, the CDM clearly has not delivered expected benefits for our environment and climate. It would be irresponsible to follow the same path and repeat the same mistakes over again. Therefore, we expect and deserve a re-engineered mechanism under 6.4. Mr. President, we believe it is fundamental to engage with high-level delegates early and actively. We have seen many times in the past, including COP25 in Madrid last year, that engaging our leaders late often fails to deliver. We must rethink our process in order to hasten progress and scale up ambition as the world rightfully expects. In closing, as always, our coalition is ready to support your work and engage in good, in good faith with all parties. Thank you, Mr. President.